बिस्मिल्लाम असलम सालार खान हेयर एंड कंटिन्यूंग द टॉपिक ऑफ रेक्टिफायर सर्कट्स इन विच इन द प्रीवियस वीडियोज वी हैव सीन वन ऑफ इट्स टाइप द हाफ वेव रेक्टिफायर नॉट अ टाइप बेसिकली वन सर्कट यू कुड से वन कन्फिगरेशन today we see the full wave rectifier so basically you understood the phenomenon of a half wave rectifier and the name suggested that it was uh, you know rectifying uh, one of the half of the uh, the the input signal that was a sinusoidal signal right that we saw so we basically we ha we had the output we had the positive cycle the negative was being removed similarly you could remove the positive and let the negative be by reversing the diode uh, the diode direction full wave rectifier so in this case you would have what both the cycles would be you know shifted to the positive side Uh, we not is already po uh, positive for the positive cycle but for the negative cycle the output would also become positive in this particular case so in the full wave rectifier the first that we see we have two configurations in this the output would be the same but the configurations are different so the first that we see is a bridge circuit is a full wave rectifier bridge network or bridge circuit or whatever I don't know what the book has written so uh, uh, let me see in the book the full name so it is yes it's bridge network it's bridge network so the bridge circuit is like this you have your input si signal over here uh, this is your v input right this is connected across terminals like this so basically we have number of diodes that are four in this case so the construction is like this it's simpler to draw on one side we have to short the p sides so have a look we have shorted the p sides on the other side we have to short the n sides so have a look let me draw it a little properly let me draw it a little properly so 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 this is have a look is that fine yes so you have p side shorted for these two n side shorted for these two the resistor the load resistor is connected at these points where the output is taken and let's say for the output we we define a polarity with a plus minus v not for the output let's say this is diode d1 this is diode d2 this is diode d3 this is diode d4 is that fine it is it's it's simple till here right now what happens we know what the 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 input and the output wave forms so have a look if this is the omega t axis this is my input axis v input so for the positive half cycle the sinusoidal input is like this this is what this is t by 2 or pi you know that and similarly this is for the negative cycle t t or this is 2 uh, pi so in this in this particular fashion the wave form repeats so this is my input voltage so let's say i consider i consider a polarity of the out of the input as well that this is considered to be positive this is considered to be negative let me tell you that once you select the polarity don't change it don't change it or you will get confused how is that so you understand it in the negative cycle anyways let's say the first case when the input voltage is greater than 0 the first case is that when input voltage is greater than 0 so what do we have in that case so which means that this side is at a greater voltage the plus side is at a greater voltage right so have a look this is connected to the n side this would be reverse biased this is connected to the p side so this would be forward biased so the current would come like this then have a look this is connected p, p side is connected to negative terminal this would be reverse bias so which means the current has to come like this and this would be forward biased again have a look and this is the current 
direction i is that fine it is these two would be open circuit in that case right yes so uh, what do we have have a look negative to positive we input positive to negative v output so in this particular case you have your v output is equal to v input so you can draw it over here this is if the omega t axis this is if my output axis so have a look till t by 2 this has been copied ideal diode considering the ideal diodes this is t by 2 the overall discussion that i'm doing i'm doing it for the ideal diodes you have to keep this in mind now what do we have for the next case when the input voltage is less than zero so now this is for the negative cycle you know and when you have mentioned that input voltage is less than zero which means the negative case you do not need to change the polarities to minus and plus fine when you mention that the input voltage is less than zero you do not have to change the polarities of the input or you will get stuck and you cannot get out of it again try it try it write this also and change the polarities also what do you get you cannot tell me the conclusion all right or if you change the polarities then consider this to be positive so let's say I'm considering this case that I'm considering the input voltage to be negative and I'm not changing the polarities. Fine. And the output voltage polarity, of course, once assumed would be the same. So again, have a look coming from positive side. Now this voltage would be less. This voltage would be less as compared to the negative voltage. So what would happen? This would become forward biased. This is at a greater terminal, right? This is a degree for understanding purpose for the understanding purpose let's say this is positive this is negative for the understanding purpose so the current comes from here goes through this diode comes through the same polarity of output like this goes through this diode and comes back like this this is basically i draw it for the understanding purpose that the lower potential is now at greater potential as compared to this point all right otherwise you do not need to change the polarities once defined polarities that are fine let them be so now at this case what will happen what will happen is uh, that you have a negative to positive and then you have a positive to negative so uh, wait i made a mistake somewhere no it's positive to negative again right positive to negative positive to negative so have a look v naught is equal to minus of v input v naught is equal to minus of v input and have a look v input is already negative in this case so minus of v input will make it positive of v input so which means this would be greater than zero and for the negative cycle my positive pulse has come over here this is your t so have a look this is the output of the full wave rectifier circuit and similarly this would repeat in such a manner and that is it so i believe that you have understood the point now let's see what we have let's see if we have anything to study so the average and the rms output voltage the average and the rms output voltage so the first point v not average so how how to calculate it you know very well this is equal to a 1 over pi the integration from 0 to so we integrated over one period have a look the period over here is pi this is pi this is 2 pi this is pi this is 2 pi you integrated over one period right so 1 over pi 0 to pi the value of the voltage which is v output is what it's vm sine of omega t considering the ideal diodes so you know this how to calculate this how to calculate this so this becomes equal to 2 vm upon pi you, you, you do the calculations this implies that your v naught of average is 2 vm upon pi fine the second is the v naught rms 
So the root mean squared value, which means you have an under the root and you have uh, the square of the mean value. So the formula would be again over one period. So it's one over pi, the integration from zero to pi. You have V naught squared. So this is Vm squared sine squared omega t. And this is whole under the root. And this is with respect to omega t, okay? This one is also with respect to omega t. So you solve this further for yourself. I am very weak in mathematics and and you know the formulas. So V not RMS comes out to be V not RMS comes out to be Vm by under the root 2. And this you could you could already tell. And one formula will be used over here that sine squared omega t is. So you know this basically, but let me write it that sine squared omega t is 1 minus cos of 2 omega t divided by 2. So from here you can check. Okay? Yes. The third term, the third term would be the efficiency. The third term is the efficiency. So efficiency is calculated in terms of what? Efficiency, we, we actually require DC power at the output, right? So if we require DC power at the output, so we uh, we will say output by input is the efficiency. So we require DC at the output, but the input we will consider the total. That is input, that is AC plus DC. So your eta is basically the DC power over the total power. So for the DC power, we use the average values. It comes from the average value, right? So uh, what do we have? I would say that uh, V not average into i naught average right and the total power is what the total power is we consider the rms value so we have v naught rms we have i naught rms so if i plug in the values or you which means you can you can plug in the values by yourself you are mature enough at this level i've already done it in the previous videos so eta is what eta comes out to be 8 by pi squared which is 81 point something eta is 81.05 percent so this is a very good value of efficiency as compared to the half wave rectifier fine which means out of the total power delivered to the load resistor rl 81.05 percent is the dc power so this is a greater value this is a good value number four is the transformer utilization factor transformer utilization factor this tells you what that the transformer that you are using how efficiently are you utilizing the kva capacity of the transformer and where is it being used so it is used over here basically with the input side you have your input signal is is provided to the transformer right and then when it's the voltage is stepped down so then it is fed into your rectifier fine let me name it as a v source so over here you have your V input. This V input comes from the step down transformer, okay? This V input. And further you have your rectifier circuit. So this transformer utilization factor tells you that how efficiently are you using your transformer. So this comes from the formula. You have V naught average divided by I naught average. You have V naught average upon I naught average. And I naught average would be what you would have a an RL over here. Similarly, divided by Vs RMS, the source RMS voltage divided by the the source RMS current. So the source RMS voltage is Vm by under root two. The source RMS current is Vm by under the root two L. You would write why? Because we would consider this that this is the uh, the same current that is flowing in the circuit. Is the same current that is flowing in the circuit the secondary side current so you you can plug in the values or let me plug in for you let me just write them it's 2 vm upon pi 2 vm upon pi from there over here you would have a 2 vm upon pi times rl the load resistor this one is rl similarly divided by vm by under the root 2 is for the source and Vm by under root 2 times Rl is for the current. So this again comes out to be 8 by pi squared, which is which is what? 
the same value 8 by pi squared and the transformer utilization factor for this has come out to be 81.05 percent which was i believe 40 percent for the half wave rectifier so which means that we are you using the capacity of the transformer 81 percent capacity of the transformer we are using so which means only 19 percent is being wasted so that's a relatively good value as compared to the half wave rectifier again S right the source rms current is the same as the output rms current why because the entire supply current is going into the load the entire supply current is going into the load so that is why the rms values of the source and the load are the same fine yes the next that we have is the form factor form factor and for form factor we have a formula that it is equal to what it is equal to the rms value of the output divided by the average value of the output so you put in the value and what do you get is you get a pi by 2 under the root pi by 2 under the root 2 so get a value for the calculator number six you would have a ripple factor and the ripple factor is a form factor squared minus one so put it over here and what do you get what do you get is you get a 0.48 so 0.48 so have a look now this is a desired value and how is this a desired value so i told you basically that this is the harmonic voltage the harmonic voltage divided by the dc voltage harmonic voltage divided by the dc voltage so the ratio is less than one the ratio is less than one which means that the dc component is greater than the harmonic component and this is what we desire this is what we desire in case of previously the half wave rectifier you saw that it was greater than one which means that the harmonic component was greater than dc at the output which we did not require which we did not require so that is it about it that is it about so i not average you could write from here right i not average this would be vm 2 vm upon pi so the load resistor rl as well similarly the i not rms you could write from here this would be i m by under the root 2. fine so you don't have a center tape transformer involved over here you have a simple transformer involved the peak inverse voltage is is equal to vm the peak inverse voltage is equal to vm how is that how is that so this is something important the peak inverse voltage is equal to vm for these circuit for this circuit why because v input would occur across each open circuit equivalent diode this is what peak inverse voltage is what the maximum reverse bias voltage that can occur across the diode when it is reverse bias before going into the breakdown region so you draw the equivalent circuit i cannot draw it right now i have to remove everything so when let's suppose in the in this red case forward bias case this one is open circuited so fall so find the voltage across this diode so that would be equal to the input voltage when it is open circuited right the Thevenin equivalent whatever you do whatever formula you use you just calculate the 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 voltage across the open circuit diode so that would come out to be uh, vm so which means you have to design your circuit where you're using the diodes so the piv rating of the diode should be greater than that so it means it should be greater than or equal to the vm value fine so which means uh, this is a lower value the vm for, for for your input so the cost would be less a little and the transformer utilization factor is quite high in this case so this is a, a good advantage for this for using this circuit and similarly you would have a disadvantage as well the number of diodes has increased it is four so that is a disadvantage of this circuit that is it see you in the next video Yes, I finished this video over here. See you in the next one with the next circuit of the full wave rectifier. Till then, take care. Goodbye.